when you're in your fine and you're an undergrad, there are so many pressures on you. There's pressures from your buddies who are busy getting jobs and bragging about how much money they're gonna make. There's pressures from your parents to make them proud. There's financial pressures to pay off that massive student loan you probably have. And there's also pressures from inside yourself as to making the most of yourself in your life when you're growing up and making the most of that degree that you've worked so hard to get over the past four years. Now, with all of these pressures, most of us, me included, just apathetically apply for jobs without a second thought because, well, what else is there to do? So, in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the different pathways that you can take, or at least you should consider taking, to figure out what's best route for you. Hey guys, I'm Mike. I'm an organizational behavior professor at the Ted Rogers School of Management. In weekly videos, I leverage my student and professor experiences to give insights to students in terms of how to better manage their university life. Now, I generally don't talk about topics learned in the classroom, but learn the hard way throughout university. So if you are in uni or will be soon, hit subscribe, smash the like, and check out my weekly videos. And in this video, I'll be talking about the pathways that people should consider after graduating from their undergrad degree. These are all the pathways that I'm familiar with. So if I've missed one, please include it in the comments so I can dive into it deeper in a later video. The first pathway we should talk about is after university, you go to work. Now this is probably the default option for most of us. You go to school to get a job and then you actually get one, right? How convenient, how linear is that approach? However, the growing reality for the majority of us is that life isn't that straightforward. Your undergrad isn't what you thought it would be. You don't have enough education from your undergrad to get your dream job, or you're still trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. So don't worry. There's many options out there. So let's dive into some of the alternative options for you. So another pathway to consider is another unprofessional undergrad. So you finished your four year degree. Nice fist pump. Boom. Now what? Well, did you like your past four years enough that you actually want to repeat it? I know it sounds crazy, but some students do. I've had students who have taken a second undergrad because at the first one, their parents or a guidance counselor guided them down the wrong direction. So they take a second undergrad to take it in an area that they're actually interested in. Now, my overarching recommendation, don't do that. Actually try to leverage or build on your existing undergrad rather than just considering the past four years as a sunk cost. After an undergrad, a lot of my top students actually continue their education and go into what I refer to as a professional undergrad. Now that's not actually what their term is called, but I don't know what it is, so we're gonna go with that. In any case, these students will go into med school or law school. I know you're thinking, med school is an undergrad? Yeah, it is. Technically, it is an undergrad. However, most of the time, you do need to have an undergrad in order to get into this program. Not all the time, because in there some institutions will accept you before you actually finish your undergrad, or in certain jurisdictions, such as Quebec, they actually have programs specifically designed to attract people into med school right out of what they refer to as high school or, or SEJA. In any case, if you're one of the fortunate few students that do get accepted into one of these med school or law school programs, boom, fist pump, you are gonna be financially set the rest of your life, nice. However, you should keep in mind that you're generally gonna be working so much that you're not gonna have a chance to spend any of that money you have. After university, some folks will wanna test their luck out at college. In fact, there are certain programs that actually require an undergrad before you can even enter the college program, such as teacher's college or police college. They generally do also have other requirements such as volunteering or work experience, but regardless, it is another pathway after university that you should consider. Another route to consider is a finishing degree or college certificate. Now, I actually think that this is one of the most underrated pathways after an undergrad. Most colleges will have a one-year applied or executive certificate program that actually requires you to have an undergrad, undergrad degree before you can even enter the program. These programs also generally have a mandatory internship. Now, if you didn't have co-op when you're in an undergrad or you don't have work experience, this might actually be a very attractive route for you. These finishing degrees can also be incredibly attractive when you want to shift gears between different fields. So say you were in psychology as a major and you took a minor in business and found throughout your undergrad, you actually have a love for business and you want to go further into this, what was your minor? Well, the great thing about this is you can take a certificate program in business and then you can signal future employers as well as gain work experience in this new area, this new passion, this new area of interest for you and move forward in that direction. And for those of you who think that university is superior to college, so why on earth would you go to college after you have this brilliant undergraduate degree? You're wrong, they're just different. In university, we teach you theory and how to ground your reasoning within that logic. In college, however, they teach you how to apply your learnings. Another pathway you should consider 
if you really like studying, is to do a research master. So in research masters, they're generally one to two years, you'll conduct some type of study or an experiment and you'll write about it. So research masters are great to teach you about data collection, conducting rigorous methodology and how to write from a research study perspective. Research masters can also be very attractive if you intend to get into a PhD from a couple of reasons. One, uh, master, research master is generally a one-year commitment as opposed to a five-year commitment from a PhD. So if you like the research masters, then continue on into going into a PhD. Uh, the second thing is that most PhDs actually require you to have a master's before entering into the PhD program. So if you're deciding about some type of master's, you might as well take a research master's to, to figure out whether you, one, like research, and two, signal to the PhD program that you do like research, that you have a level of expertise in terms of conducting research, and that'll probably help you get into a more attractive PhD program. However, I'm certainly not promoting the idea of you getting a PhD. Even though I have one, I don't think it's a really good idea, to be honest. Okay, so in another video in the upcoming weeks, I'll actually explain why you should not be chasing a PhD if you intend to stay in Canada in the long run. Another type of master's you should consider is a professional master, such as an MBA, a master's of business administration. These programs typically are more applied in nature, but have no major writing components and will allow you to develop your skills in whatever area they specialize in. These programs typically run 12, 16, or 24 months in duration, and these can be a very attractive option if you want a master's, but don't like research. Okay, so you finished your undergrad, you still don't know what to do? Ah, that's a future you problem. Let's go travel right now, come on, dude. All right, for the majority of us, we don't have money to go traveling. So you shouldn't really be putting yourself more into debt, even though these are the best years of your life. So you'd be missing out big if you weren't traveling. But gap years are great and I highly endorse them. Depending on the nature of the trip, you can learn new skills. You can pick up new language. You can learn things about yourself. You can learn things about others. You can learn things about culture. You can learn so much. So I highly endorse traveling and going on gap trips. However, keep them fixated and plan ahead and make sure you don't spend every single dollar you've ever earned or will earn over the next 10 years, not smart. But here's a big pro tip if you really wanna do it to help you balance your future self who is largely in debt with your current self who is really eager, has a ton of energy and just wants to have fun, okay? Many employers will actually allow you to delay start dates up to a fixated period of time. So you can travel, so you can sign on with a company and still travel for four, six, eight, ten 10 months and then have a job afterwards. So if you wanna fix your finances to make sure that you can pay off that debt, that you're gonna have in a crew during your trip, then do that. Sign on with a company first, ask for a delayed start date, and then go enjoy yourself. So the last pathway I'm gonna talk about is volunteering. And for those of you who do not have any work experience or are struggling to find a job, you might be considering volunteering to gain work-related experience. Now volunteering can be great in that it gives you applied experience in your field of interest. Volunteering can also be highly desirable in certain programs such as policing or to get into med school, because it shows your diversity and citizenship to the public. However, and this is a big however, in today's market, I don't really condone volunteering because with job mobility at a record high, job vacancies at a record high, everybody's looking for workers. So why on earth would you be working for free? So if somebody's asking you to work for free, just say no, continue to persevere and continue to look for a job because you will find a job in your area. You just need to look, continue going through it. All right, guys, that's it. That's my list of pathways for after an undergraduate degree. Did I miss any? Did I miss your path? If so, write it in the comments. If you found this video helpful and want to hear about other tips to make your student life a little bit more manageable, hit subscribe, smash the like, make sure the notification tab is on, and check out my video next week. Until then, have a good one.